no news, <coughs> no news. I think all the players are, are uh, available. It's true that they travel, they played, but they came back in good condition and they are all available. Boys, a special derby, Carlo. <coughs> Into Liverpool <coughs> for 10 years, but you have a very good record as a Napoli head coach. What is your message to the players ahead of this big game? The message for us is uh, that uh, we are going to have uh, an excited game. It's a derby, and you know, everyone knows how our supporter uh, supporting us in, for this game. Um, and after that, I, I think it um, will be good for us to have this kind of test. We know one of the best teams in England for sure. They are the best. They were the best last season. They are one of the best teams in the world. It's a fantastic challenge, good test for us. And be confident and be happy to play this game. Carlo, you've made some amazing signings this summer. Many say you won the transfer window. The domestic window is open till five o'clock today. Are you finished or can we expect maybe one more in today? No, honestly, I'm not focused there in this moment. We we are focused on the derby for tomorrow and, and I think it is, it is, a, is, a <clears throat> is working, our director is working on this. Um. <clears throat> Talk about there was talk this week about project big picture and looking at the structure to help clubs in the lower leagues and the future of the Premier League. Carlo, you have managed all over the world, massive clubs, massive countries. Can you just tell me how much you love being a manager in England? Because I get the feeling you really missed it and you were so happy to come back. Tell me how much you love in, being in England and the, and, the, and the structure here. It's true that I had experience uh, in other country. It's always football, but uh, I think the Premier League has really good organization. There is really good atmosphere, as I said a lot of time. I think it's the best for the <coughs> the the team that the Premier League has. Is the the best competition, the best league in the world, in my opinion. Thank you, Carlos. <coughs> okay, if we go to Sam from Premier League Productions, please. Hi, Carlo, good to see you. Um, 12 goals for your side already in the Premier League so far this season, 11 for Liverpool. Are we expecting a somewhat different Merseyside derby from the one back in June, do you think? I think it's different because uh, in June, uh, I think we was the game after the lockdown. We were not fit, both teams, we were not ready. I think it will be a different game with different intensity and uh, with different quality, I'm sure. 144 goals so far in the Premier League. It's a record so far this season. What was your reaction watching the 7-2 the victory for Aston Villa against Liverpool? Was it one of surprise or actually is this something that we can expect to see more of? A lot of goals in games and, and somewhat surprising results. Well, in general, there were a lot of goals in the past games. I think it depends because all the team wants to attack in this moment. Uh, the fact also that there is no crowd, maybe you are less worried, you are uh, about uh, to defend, you want to attack. And, uh, but I think that is going, is going to change because I think that uh, the team in the future, we are more focused defensively. <clears throat> Finally for me, Carlo, Dominic Calvert-Lewin showed no signs of slowing down, did he, on the uh, international break? How great was it to see him perform so well for his country? And, and could you give us a sense of just how much he is enjoying his football at Everton at the moment? No, I think he's in, he's in a good moment. He showed good quality also with the national team. We are happy for this. For him, of course, he was uh, really happy to play for the national team. He scored goals and now... He's back uh, in the same, with the same condition and uh, with the same attitude. Thank you, Carla. Alex Howell from BBC, please. Hi, Carla. Hi. Jurgen Klopp says he has so much respect for you and uh, Everton could be in line and could be the next challengers of the title. What do you say about that? I want to say thanks to him because I think to to be 
a challenger for Liverpool could be really good for us. Um, but of course, uh, Liverpool uh, is doing so well. We are, I don't, I think we are not so far, but we are still far from them. And as I said, we can have uh, a good test tomorrow against them to see how far we are. And it's 10 years to the day tomorrow since Everton beat Liverpool in the Premier League. Seamus Coleman actually played that day. Has he spoken to you? Has he spoken to the group about what this game means? No, I think he didn't... He doesn't need to speak how imp to, to the other teammates how important it is... Uh, uh, th this this derby and uh, everyone knows how important is the derby, and how and everyone knows how important is this game for this period. That is really important period for us, and we want to keep uh, this period good for the future. That's it for me. Thank you, okay. James Mountford, Radio Merseyside, please. Hello, Carla. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Uh, while understanding Liverpool's strengths, um, are you even more uh, wary of them because of that defeat against Aston Villa in the last game? But I think that we, we don't have to think what happened in the last game. We have to think that uh, Liverpool, as usually does, is a fantastic team with, that plays with a lot of intensity, with a lot of quality. And this this is... This will be the opponent that we are going to play tomorrow. So <clears throat> they have to pay attention. They have a lot of quality, but uh, I think we have we have to be confident to to be able to show in the game our quality. And for many Everton fans, this this will be an eagerly anticipated uh, a derby in, in a long time, given how your team has started the season. Is is that the feeling in the dressing room as well? How excited are you for this particular game? No, I think that the feeling in the dressing room is good. Uh, we started really well, and we know that uh, <clears throat> there will be it will be a fantastic challenge tomorrow. We are ready for the challenge, uh, knowing that maybe it's the most difficult challenge uh, for us in this moment. And I suppose it's it's a a good problem for a manager to have because you've got Andre Gomez uh, coming back as well. Uh, obviously, you put Gilfie Sigerson and Tom Davis in the the last game, so uh, how do you decide what you're going to do in that area? <laughs> how? I'm going to decide how, I don't know how, but uh, I'm going to decide with, uh, which will be the lineup uh, for uh, uh, tomorrow, knowing that I have a lot of players that wants to play fit, and this is good also if he thinks about the substitution during the game. <clears throat> Thank you, Carlo, good luck. Thank you. James Secundra from TalkSport. <coughs> Carlo, Jürgen Klopp said that he couldn't respect you more and that you're a wonderful human being. There seems to be a huge amount of respect between the two of you. Yeah, we are a good friend. We are a good friend. Um, I feel good when I am with him. I, we don't have a lot of time, of, of course, to talk uh, because we are really busy, but all the time that we meet... Uh, we spend uh, we spend <coughs> good time. He's a fantastic man. I think he's a fantastic man. He brings to me energy when I, when I am with him. He, he gave he gave to me energy, and this is important. I have a lot of respect of him. Uh, it's an honor. It's an honor for me to be considered his friend. He is my friend. Carlo, it's been a very difficult week for the city of Liverpool. How desperate are you to give the Blue Hearts something to cheer about this weekend? Oh, of course, uh, there is a difficult period for, for everyone, but uh, the only thing that we can do is uh, to follow the protocol, the rules that the government gives to us and to be patient and to hope that uh, everything will be OK as soon as possible. And just finally from me, how difficult do you think it's going to be to keep the momentum going from the opening part of the season when you consider the likes of Brokarlison, James and Yerin Mina were in South America playing an in international on Wednesday. Yeah, I think that uh, every every team has uh, had players that played uh, 
in the in the um, the international break the important was for us that they came back uh, uh, without problem in good condition maybe they are a little bit tired but uh, so it, and this is could be a consideration to choose the lineup and also mm, to see what happened during the game thank you Carlo. thank you Louis Rastarepo, please. Hola, Carlo. Hi, how are you? Can you hear me? Hi. Oh, hi. Yes, two questions. Uh, the first one is how is the situation of Jeremy Mina? Because he didn't play against Chile. No, Jeremy Min is okay. He's okay. He trained today without problem. I think that he had a little problem uh, during um, uh, the training before uh, the last game. But after that, uh, he rests for this and um, is fit for tomorrow. Okay. And do you think this long trip from South America, from Santiago to Liverpool? Could affect the performance of Hamed Rodriguez and Jeremy, for example? Ah, we will see tomorrow. We will see tomorrow. It's true that they came back yesterday, but uh, we are going to use this time to recover to recover well them, and um, and then we will see. We will see in the game. We can uh, take one more question in the the open section before we go to the newspapers. So, if, if anyone wants to. Ask a question in the open section, please put your hand up now. Jim Conlon. Hello, Carlo. Um, in relation to your Brazilian contingent there, Ricardson, um, Ricardson, uh, Alan, and Bernard. You had some really great Brazilians in AC Milan, the likes of Cafu, the likes of Pato, Kaká, Thiago Silva. How do you consider these Brazilians that you have here at Everton? I know Kaká was a special player, but do you see similarities in the likes of Bernard to Pato? Do you see similarities in the likes of Ricardson uh, to Kaká? And I suppose that uh, you had some great Brazilians in your AC Milan uh, side. Uh, are you happy with the Brazilians that you have in Everton? And uh, how big of a role do you think that Bernard is going to play? Do you see him in that sort of same caliber? Well, I don't. I don't see similarity with the other Brazilian that I trained. They are uh, every one of these players has special uh, and distinct quality. Uh, it's true that Bernard didn't play a lot, but he's training well. I have confidence on him, and in the future, he's going to play. Okay, so. That's 